Welcome to the first and only Knowing Me, Knowing You with Alan Jack and Aqua Trolls. Today's topic for our question and answer sessions will be Greenkeeping post COVID 19, how the landscape has changed. To answer these questions, we're joined by five course managers from across the country Ian Riddle and Royal Dornock, David Cool of Luff, Luffness, James Lindsay, Stirling Golf Club, Scott Davidson, Cap Cap Castle, and Simon Crawford, Ardfin Estate in Jura. So, thanks for joining me guys. I'm sure your fellow greenkeepers will love to hear how you have all managed during these trying times, and hopefully there'll be some members listening too. So, first question I would like to ask you all, and I'll ask this to you all at the moment. How have things been for you during the restrictions? Very strange. You know, having no golfers on a golf course is just not right. And having no staff is even worse. It must, it must be difficult to try and gear up. And when, when you're working with golfers, I suppose the weekend golf is what you're gearing up for because there's a competition on. So it must be hard trying to do that when there's no competitions. It must be quite difficult to try and motivate yourself, yeah? How do we know the US get on it? Eh? How they feel? That's a very good point, actually. Because you wonder, well, I mean, uh, the point is just try to maintain the course to the highest standard, but obviously we know golf, it's a bit, it is very strange right enough. But um, the, the, there is pluses, obviously. I mean, like I sprayed all my fairies this week in two days flat, which normally takes about a week, uh, you know, because you're try to get it early and then there's golf up here and you have to so there's there's pros and cons but it's very, it is very strange and probably when the golf resumes it'll be equally as strange seeing golfers on the place just getting used to it yeah it's, it's one of the really weird things that you expect feedback from golfers you know we can be out there working but we're not playing golf and we're out working you know we get feedback whether it be good or bad and we're not getting any feedback at all at the moment you know, we don't know how the greens are running. We might have had a pat in them every now and then. You know, we, get, we just don't know. We'll soon find out when the golfers come back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, personally, it's, it's been... Luckily, we have no family members actually affected by the virus itself, and I've been on and off in furlough, so it's been strange spending so much time at home, you know, kind of enjoying it with the family as well, and not having to worry about green speeds and bunkers and stuff like that for a few weeks, you know, but... I don't think it's, it's just not going to be normal, even though it's golf's kind of coming back next Friday with the sounds of things, but it's definitely not going to be normal as it was before with two balls maximum out in the course and, and all the restrictions that will be in place. So it's getting used to that new norm again. What about you yeah. guys, Scott, Simon? Yeah, I found it quite uh, quite tough the first month. Obviously, being being myself, I was just, uh, every else was furloughed. Just uh, quite, quite tough mentally, just being out there kind of, all day by yourself out in the golf course and not really seeing any members, nobody to communicate. Even just that bit, from a bit of banter with the kind of the staff and the boys normally, just kind of uh, try to speak to them, just kind of on a weekly basis, basis or every two weeks, just to kind of see how they're doing and just so they hear a different voice as well. Yeah, I mean, for me and our fin, it didn't change too much where. When it got announced, everybody went off for a week, and then we were happy enough that there was four of us came back to work. All the guys that live on Jura, and I allocated a gator each. We allocated a, a bathroom each. We had sanitizer and everything. The guys from Isla they stayed on Isla for the for the last six weeks, and now they they just came back on Monday. So there is. Five of us at work. One guy is diabetic, so he's now full time looking after the the estate gardens where he can work by himself. And then I've got a seasonal who's from Isla who worked with me before, spent a year in America. He started with me on Monday. So, but for me with golf, I've never we really never opened. We opened in September, October, and golfers. So this was us. Our grand opening was supposed to be in April, May. 
So we're all gearing up towards that, and then it's not happened, but it's a quiet place due to anyway, so it's not a massive difference. But like you're saying about, I'm so used to 11 years in the Caribbean, everyday golf, you up at Dornoch, everyday golf, and now where you maybe had a couple of days of golf here and there, it just becomes your own. You can look after it the way you want to rather than have to chase your tail and worry about breaking bunkers and green speed. Yeah. So that that leads me on to my next question because the last two there, you mentioned staffing issues as well and staff resources and the limitations on your frequency of cuts must have been challenging and guessing and, and, and guess deciding what may be deemed essential is everyone will have differences, opinions. That, that essential part was quite difficult for me because we've all got various of opinions on essential. So what would you deem as essential at Loft Nest, David? Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, obviously cutting greens, tees, aprons, fairies, all the usual stuff and semi-rough, but they, from the outset, um, Bigger recommended um, or said we were allowed to cut greens up to three times a week, which was more than enough for us during the last month where it's been really dry and freezing cold. Exactly the same spring um, pattern that we've had for the last 10 years, believe it or not. You watch all your winter work curl up and die. It's the worst part of my job. <laughs> uh, but equally essential for me is, believe it or not, is um, flying on tea bankings, for instance, because Loughness Ness is very sort of dormant. The grass hardly grows, but the tea bankings grow like you wouldn't believe. So if you you know if you're leaving them for a couple of weeks, you know you're ending up going to have to strim them. So things like that. But like the uh, so non-essential, obviously we're flying on bunkers uh, once a fortnight. Tea bankings are getting done once a fortnight. Uh, but now as the growth's just starting at Loughness, Ness, we're now looking at we're going to have to start cutting semi once every week. Fairways twice a week. They're desperate to be cut twice a week now. Tees and aprons twice a week. Fair uh, greens will get away three times, three times a week, and that is the minimum. That's definitely essential. But just to further that, it's amazing how much time you save when you don't have to bother about bunkers. We've got just over 100 bunkers on this course, um, and obviously every morning during normal times they're raked before golf and um, cleaned out when you fly more, etc. Whereas now you just go around fly more, and you don't even bother raking up the debris. We'll do that before golf starts again. And never having to bother diviting. So, you know, we're working, instead of starting at seven, we just start stupidly early. We, we're okay. And um, the golfers don't appear here till, you know, nine ish. So, it's, instead of starting at seven, we've been starting at eight. And uh, we've been finishing about half two and uh, getting everything done that's deemed essential. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I deem essential anyway. But as I say, it's amazing how much time you save when you don't have to do the normal stuff like raking bunkers or diviting fairies. James, obviously you and I have discussed as well, and you've been on furlough, as you said earlier on. Have you been getting communication via the staff that's been in and telling you what the situation has been like for them? Uh, yeah, I've been regular contact, yeah. I mean, we had a bit of time before I took off, actually, to sort of come up with a programme. You know, like you say, the basics, a bit of spraying, very little fertiliser, but we're kind of lucky it was so early in the year, so I said there was very little growth. Uh, four guys furloughed out of six, so we only had two guys in, so we're limited to what they could do anyway. And yeah, just the basic cutting, following the bigger guidelines again, it was all all we were doing. Yeah, so yeah, we start to gear things up now. Obviously, before play comes back, top dressing and, and fertilising and stuff. Uh, I mean, we've still got some winter projects. Unfortunately, we didn't get finished. So they're still needing uh, just some tweaks to do that to finish that. Uh, and obviously I don't want to do much top dressing and spike them when the members come back so we're trying to rush around now to get didn't really get spring renovations done That's that was the big thing uh, no verde draining on the tees approaches walk-offs things like that so they've kind of recovered but it'll be interesting to see how they cope without that that uh, decompaction and stuff after the wet winter we had so. yeah and what about the other guys how's the staff resources and the limitations affected you well, certainly as at the Dornick, very similar to Davy uh, down at Loughness. It's a uh, cold east winds in March and April. Cutting, keeping on top of cutting was not a problem. There was nothing growing. Uh, the problem was keeping everything actually wet or damp, shall I say. Uh, that was a big 
this problem. We had the uh, 16 furlough and working with three for 36 holes for four weeks. And then we've slowly taken a few guys back and we'll end up pretty much back to full strength, hopefully by the time golf starts. Yeah, but uh, no, we've we've kept on top of the cat and it's really just starting to pick up now, which is not unusual up here. So we'll get another three guys back in uh, at the start of next week uh, to help us with the cutting. And uh, then more the following week. Uh, and that'll be us pretty much at the full squad. We've taken the mechanic back. Uh, I was doing the, the basic mechanics myself for a wee while, uh, but things are too technical since I was last in a workshop. You know, <laughs> things have got electric wires on them that they never used to. So, but no, very similar to Davey. Good, good. Scott, obviously you and I have spoken as well, and mm -hmm. when it first started, you were just in on your own. Yeah. And so, that must have been quite a bit of pressure. Uh, it was quite tough. We furloughed uh, five staff straight straight away. Um, as as guys have kind of touched on, I mean, we didn't have too much growth at the time, so I was able to keep on top of kind of uh, greens three times a week, fairways once a week, uh, tees and approaches once a week. I uh, first cut a rough as well, kept on top of that. Uh, we haven't done any maintenance to the bunkers in, in two, the last two months, so no fly mowing really round about, about them or edging. So, I mean, there's a lot of work there to be done. Um, we've, we've kept on top of tea bankings roughly because we were able to get a machine round most of them. Uh, the big, big thing for us was when the lockdown came into play, uh, we'd still had some outstanding winter projects to kind of finish off down in the West Coast. The, the winter was pretty pretty boot brutal again with the how, how wet it was so yeah I mean looking forward to getting some guys back to maybe even finish these projects a uh, bit of seeding and kind of we started a, a kind of a, a, a green project as well like kind of practice green project so yeah it'll be nice to try and tie off these areas soon. Sai what about yourself? Uh, like I said I mean when it all happened uh, everybody went off and then slowly but surely. But I think it would have been, uh, I think it was so vague with with the government stipulating who can return to work, who's, who can't. I would have thought that, you know, speaking to some other people in the business where they're on their own, I would have thought they could have looked into things a bit better um, and said, look, greenkeepers, you can go to work because you can. Uh, sit in a tractor, sit in a machine all day by yourself. So some staff you had saying we shouldn't be here. Some were saying we should be here. Um, and then essential maintenance as well. You know, the, the grass wasn't growing so much. We, I'm, I'm, I'm only cutting greens once a week. We are fescue greens at seven mil because we don't have any golf. So, uh, But essential, I figured as well, I top dressed. A lot of people couldn't get sand. We bring the sand from Belfast in, in 850 tonnes at a time. So... I, I try to do and finish off some of the winter projects. I've got an owner that if we had taken golf now and the golf course wasn't ready, I don't I wouldn't want to see what he says if it was if it was negative feedback. So I was trying to do my best to try and keep everybody happy, the staff and the owners, if you know. Simon, staying with you, um a lot of the guys and he's all touched on it, weather. The weather that we've experienced recently, would you consider this to be fortunate? Has it helped? It helped to yeah, I would have said so. I mean, obviously the winter was brutal, it was yeah. so wet, but the dry, the dry, dry conditions there meant there wasn't a lot of growth, so you could get away with it. But I've only got irrigation on greens and surrounds. I've never irrigated the tees yet. It's there, but not the fairway. The fairway survived really well. But I can't imagine I'm a member at Macri on Isla and I know the troubles he has there with how how wet it was in the winter and then how it went straight to being dry and no growth. Yeah. And I was thinking how he must be struggling because there's no irrigation in the fairways there. And I think he only had two guys and they're supposed to be out hand water pulling hoses to try and water bits on fairways and stuff. But for me it was it's a blessing because the growth wasn't there. Now it's starting to come now, but now it's just the right time I'm getting some 
uh, staff back. Um, but we still don't even know exactly when we're going to get to play golf. Uh, well, it's a bit unusual. It would be, I think. I think for some of the guys I spoke to, friends of mine down in England, 48 hours notice to see your opening. That was ludicrous. No staff. And uh, I've heard them complaining, pe members complaining about the Greens. <laughs> it's bizarre. Crazy. It's absolutely bizarre. So do, do you think part of the challenge with the weather, although we didn't have the, the, the cutting as uh, is, is much in demand, was the moisture more difficult to control yeah. then? I said, try to irrigate, try to water, hand water in greens, but there's only a couple of you. Uh, it was, that was the challenge. Dave, and David, how's that over on the East Coast? Because we know the East Coast is slightly drier compared slightly to... Slightly drier? Compared it's way to, drier than the West Coast, isn't it? <laughs> compared oh, to the West Coast. That is an Arab sandal here, mate. Oh, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't go over how different it is from east to west, you know, the amount of rain that we get here. How much rain have you had, you and Donna, for the year? Do you know how much you've had for the year? I'd like to check it. Oh, I was enough. talking to Stevie at, Roy, at uh, Trump Aberdeen. He had like 77 mil since the 1st of January. I think we had that in the first three days of January. So far in 2020, we have had 274. Yeah, that's not too, I mean... Yeah. 200 of them would have been in like a fortnight four yeah. and then it's just been nothing. That's uh, the one thing as well, because of that really wet, then really dry cycle. Is our, I don't know what you guys like, but our fairy rings are horrendous this year. Like turning into type ones, you know, on the greens and that. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, no, again, if we can go back to essential maintenance, one thing I should have said was... Uh, yeah, definitely the application of wetting agent was in, in my book, essential maintenance yeah. and uh, getting the water on there. That's what we spent most of the, the lockdown period doing. But um, yeah, no, it's been it's been so dry here. Um, a lot of water and a lot of sprinkling. We've got a full water wall irrigation system, which is due to be the place uh, autumn 21. It's 30 years old, the system, so that is problematic, but it's hardly been off. But again, you get the winds and it's hardly worth putting on sometimes, you yeah. know. Um, but no, it's, it has been a lot of water and I have been putting more wetting agent on than ever before. Fairways, teas, greens, the whole lot. So, yeah. But we, um, and uh, lockdown, we've had, it's worked out perfect for us because we furloughed three staff, I think, going back to like the 24th of March. They were off for three weeks. This was the guidance that our club received and you know everybody interprets um furlough different every golf course has done it differently down here and we were in a wee group me myself uh, duffy colin Irvin, Stuart greenwood we were on a wee group together to see and everyone was different how they were furloughing their, their staff but it worked it perfect for us because three guys off for three weeks and then a the rotation the other three in for three weeks and then the next the first lot that were off for three weeks they were off for a week they're back in and that lot that were in for three weeks are off for a week, and then we're all resuming. Everybody's back in on the 28th, full staff on the 28th, expecting golf to resume possibly the 29th, maybe the 1st of June, round about then. So we're lucky that we're going to have full staff in a couple of days before golf will resume, so we can get all the bunkers sorted out and what have you. David, just as you're saying that, you're obviously, obviously looking at the map, my next question, and hearing what you're saying about golf starting back and possibly the 1st of June. I've walked through my local golf course and I've seen some of the challenges that you guys have been facing, such as bunkers and the tea banks and the areas that need to be some manicuring, as we, as we touched on. Do you see this being an issue when the courses finally get the go-ahead to open as well? The Sorry, to me, Dave, yeah. I'll ask, um, I'll ask, it, I'll ask it to um, James, actually, because obviously, James, you've got a, a totally different thing nowadays because you're just going straight, in, straight into it. Yeah. I mean, Sterling's always been popular with walkers anyway. You know, we get, we've get we got a public path right around the outside, but they don't stick to it. You know, they walk all over the course. We're lucky we haven't suffered any vandalism. That's the main thing. It's just, yeah, like kids playing in bunkers and stuff. So probably next week that'll be a priority. They'll need to check the sand moved around. So yeah, that's it's more visual. At least there's no vandalism. That's been our big 
biggest boy. James, will your bunkers be marked as GUR or he's going to have them in play? Possibly. I told him we'll make, like I say, we've got next week to prepare as many as we can, but obviously we've got to be cutting as well. So we'll we'll maybe start with green sides and uh, we'll just let the members know uh, near the time what we'll manage to get fixed. So it could be green sides in play, fairways, GUR, uh, could be front nine. I just, yeah, they've been told, they've been told we'll, we'll do our best to get them back and play as quick as we can. Oh, good, good. Ian, what about yourself? Uh, our course will be back up just as per normal. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go. We've been lucky because uh, over the last few weeks, we're taking more guys back. The championship course is pretty much ready to go. So mm -hmm. Maybe not refined, or not as refined as we would want it. Uh, it just means that the second course is taking a bit of a hit. Yeah, because uh, you used up all the resources on the main course. So, no, we, we should be okay. We should be okay. Uh, I, I think our, our hope we would get a week's grace from members complaining before they... they <laughs> yeah, right. A week's a bit much. Maybe a couple of hours. Aye. Say, so. say what about yourself? Uh, my owner has decided to not open at all for the year. <laughs> we had uh, chefs, housekeepers, all sorts of staff lined up to start hotel manager and he's now he was a consultant he's now been told that it's not happening uh, there, there was no point in bringing in all these new chefs and stuff like that they're charging a lot of money to come here and he's decided that they're going to come in August if he can get out of New York they'll have it for the month of New York and he'll entertain his friends and then September we're supposed to have some golf course raters coming uh, and as far as I know, that is it. Scott, what about yourself? Yeah, next week, uh, I think we're just planning on trying to refine some surfaces. Um, we, we're planted GUR bunkers for the first month, and all practice facilities aren't going to be in play either. So even the putting green uh, practice nets, kind of practice fairway. So that kind of that will help us a bit. I and just try and catch up. We've got loads of strumming and fly mowing still to do. I, but I also want to take advantage next week of kind of not having any golfers out there and getting quite a bit of spraying done. Spray the greens, tees, fairways. I know it's quite a lot of weeds. We've kind of struggled. We've got quite a lot of daisies and all that popping up this year. So hopefully try and get them sprayed with a selective next week. Good, good. But yeah, I mean, just we'll just have to take it. It's going to be tough, obviously, try to manage surfaces and hopefully golfers' expectations won't be as high as normal. But I mean, I think it's that's going to be tough for everybody in the golf industry in the next couple of weeks. Hey, Davy and Ian, this this next question, and obviously you guys are the more mature end of the scale, and you've got probably a lot more experience. <laughs> than the other guys uh, has, has this experience taught you anything and if so what have you learned and will it be useful in your practices or methods going forward oh, David you can go first <laughs> uh, okay right yeah uh, well most years I'm kind of on this weather for instance fertilizer program and I'm on the swell, shall I put on a wee bit of lawn sand now or shall I leave it? And anyway, this year, because obviously we've had half the staff uh, furloughed, the last thing you want to put on is fertilizer. So I've just been using some um, liquid um, feed, actually, a <laughs> Thanks for the pun, thanks for the pun, David. A tain, um, seaweed, liquid seaweed. Um, what was it called? Excel or something? I can't remember. Um, and um, wetting agent, that's all I've been putting on. And uh, mm -hmm. the greens are fine. But one thing also that I've learned is um, because, again, reduced staff numbers means reduced inputs of refinement. Um, so I would, I would class scarifying as an essential. Now, I don't normally scarify early. I think you're making seed beds for meadow grass. But I would have probably scarified or just groomed a couple of times by now. I haven't done it. This morning, hand mowed our greens this morning, and I just noticed a hell of a lateral growth appearing now. So, yeah, 
definitely an essential, even early part of the season, is um, some scar- some light scarifying. So that's yeah. two things I've learned. Yeah. Certainly for us, we've not had the amount of staff that we normally have, and we're not as manicured as what we normally are. You know, you don't yeah. want to make a links course too manicured anyway, but there's a few areas that we've obviously left to grow because we don't have the staff to cut it. I now realise that sometimes it actually looks a lot better when things are left alone. So even when the boys come back, we still might not cut areas. You know, it's actually changed. It's given us a chance as well to change things, you know, change shapes of fairways, you know, because uh, we don't have people trampling all over it or golf buggies driving over things. Our pathways now have come back a treat. You know, we've actually got grass and areas I haven't seen for 30 odd years. So, you know, which is great. But, uh, no, I, you know, I certainly don't take for granted, you know, having staff. You know, yeah. uh, and my hat goes off to people now who actually run a golf course all year with two or three people. You know, uh, that, they, they're unrealistic. These courses that 18 whole courses and they have like three staff. I just think it's totally unrealistic. You think one of them goes on holiday, another one's sick. I don't know how they manage it. You know, it's difficult. We're, we're spoiled in here. We are. And we, we acknowledge it. We know it. We're spoiled. Yeah, and we're, and we're the same. It's exactly the same. You know, I'm used to 20 guys walking in the shed in the morning, and then I, I'm standing looking at two. You know, it's yeah. like, well, what can we do? And that's their normal day. That's their normal week. Yeah. You know, so, you know, fair play to them. Yeah. Okay, James, mm-hmm. again, as we spoke about, you, you've been followed, but probably being followed has given you a lot of time to think. I know you've spent a lot of time with the family, and it's been really good to spend time with the family, but there must be times when you're sitting there thinking, right, what needs done? What can I do? Are the guy, What are the guys doing as well? Oh, that's been the hardest thing, yeah. Wondering what the course is like. The course all right. What's the greens like? But, yeah, I mean, usually just thinking where. We're usually trying to push the greens on earlier and early because competitions have been starting so early. So it's been seeing the difference is just relaxing a bit and let nature, let the grass grow. There hasn't been that much of a difference, you know, when trying to push it and just letting things go naturally, you know. So like I say, less fertilizer, just seaweeds and wetting agent. And just let the greens come on, keeping the heights up a little bit. And the greens are as good, you know. Good, good, brilliant. Scott, what about yourself? Yeah, just the same. Um, yeah, just kind of seaweeds inputs. Um, I mean, it's it's one of these situations that we're. Uh, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. I think. I think we're just kind of the same. Like kind of having. I think we'll be back to four guys from Tuesday. So I um, just to try and, and then I don't think I'll have a full squad till maybe the end of June, end of July. So I uh, it's just take every day as it comes. Has has there been any practices though, or any methods that you've had to implement during this time that you might think you might take forward, or you might use it and go like, you know what, I've learned something from that. I think uh, getting dry cuts on some of the surfaces has been great. I mean, okay, we've only been cutting things maybe once a week, but I mean, getting a dry cut on things really has made a difference. Uh, also we've got quite a lot of bottlenecks at Cathcart Castle uh, like kind of walkways and uh, the recovery I think it's the same with Ian just to start seeing grass kind of growing on these areas has been been brilliant so I think traffic management over the, maybe not straight away but once we can start putting out some golf course furniture getting really into kind of traffic management and trying to get the the, the kind of golfers away from these kind of uh, bottleneck spots so and then start to try and refine some of the approaches. But we we were quite lucky. Um, the weather was really good here on Wednesday, so we kind of done a wee light variety cut and put nine tub and a top dressing on on the greens. Uh, and then obviously it's chucking it a rain again today, so that's kind of worked in nicely. But I just wanted to do that. I feel like obviously if we do get golf next week, then you don't want to kind of start disrupting uh, members out very cutting so I think that, that I just deem that as essential maintenance good yeah good. I wish I had <laughs> Sai si, now this experience is unique however the environment that you work in 
guys, if any, if any of you get a chance, you need to go over to Ardfin and see it. It's phenomenal. And it is a unique situation, Si. You know, island life's unique as well. How is this experience? Has it changed much over there or is it just stayed the same? I mean, I, I know it's changed for the respect where I can't go and see my family on Isla or I've not left the island. Have you ever seen the movie The Shining? <laughs> It's a bit like that. I mean, I've been. I had, uh, had a, a load of lads came up here, all greenkeepers, Alan from Dunbury. Um, a load of lads came over where a wee tournament at Macri the week before that it all happened, and you know it was a talk that, that this is you know the coronavirus is coming this way, and we had a great few days at Macri, stayed the night there, had a night here, play golf, and, and then the world just changed so quickly. I mean, it's amazing how quick it did just change. Uh, but because we've never really opened and we have been able to isolate, not all my staff live close to here that that went back to work. The guys on Isla, all right, I miss them, but um, we just opened the gates and let a few more deer in. They've been eating all the fairways and keeping the rough down nicely. Willie's got about 100 deer grazing on it while it's locked down. So, <laughs> nah, I mean, it is a unique place. We're lucky that, you know, we don't have... We don't have to get ready for golfers. Um, the only thing with here, you know, like, uh, I think a lot of people are on edge and watching what other people are doing, and because it's a small community, because we did go back to to work, you know, a lot of locals are negative towards what's been built here, and the guys invested a lot of money in it, and I mean, a lot of people have got jobs, but there's still a lot of negativity towards our fin, and because we went to work. I believe somebody had sent a, an email to the owner complaining and saying that we we're putting the safety to the, the community uh, at risk. So some of it was a bit negative towards us. we kind of been waiting for the distillery. jura has got a whiskey distillery here. So we're kind of following them. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for, for us. So they brought their staff in. So that's when we brought our staff back in. They brought people over from Isla to do some work on the distillery. So then we were happy to get deliveries brought back over. I've got a boat that we're, we're building. A, I can't wait to build it. We're building a putting green. It's 2,000. Oh, what size do you want? It's, a, it's going to be about 2,500 square metres. And I've got eight boatloads of sand, root zone, gravel, you name it, coming over. And, uh, you know, you talk about essential, what's essential, but I've got a guy that uh, this is about to go bust because he's got a boat that wants to bring all this stuff from Belfast. I actually phoned the police last week and said, "Is it? Is it, can we have permission to bring this boat over from Ireland to deliver all this material? And they said, you need to go onto the government website for what's essential. And I said, well, for me, it's not that essential because... You know, it can wait to build, but the guy that owns the boat is sending me emails saying that he's about to move his boat from uh, the west coast of Scotland to Norway, where they are operating. So then we won't be able to get the stuff because that's the only boat that's got the kind of draft that can get into the pier here. So it's coming next week because they got the approval from our guy in Butte Council. So Wednesday next week, I'm going to have two dumpers driving up down the pier, making an awful lot of noise in a wee place that's seen nobody. It's only a population of 200 people here, and I'm just waiting for the backlash. It's going to be interesting. Interesting. So, again, moving on to the next question. Obviously, there's going to be pros and cons to having zero play on your course. What would you guys believe that these pros and cons are? Davey, I'll, I'll ask you that one first. Uh, <clears throat> well, the... Um... The pros are obviously being able to get on and do work, like I said, spraying and stuff like that, getting all that stuff out of the way. It's great going out cutting tees, uh, cutting fairways in half a day, you know, uh, with no golf. So that's the pros. Uh, the cons, you, greens need walked on, definitely. Um, I suppose as well, we're lucky when lockdown did happen. Can you imagine if we were just going into it now, going into the summer? It's a nightmare. But we're lucky, I think, when it did happen. Um, but the, the biggest problem we've found, and I'm sure everyone, 99% of folks the same, is the amount of dog walkers and cyclists and just 
you know, families. And listen, I'm uh, sympathetic towards any family, especially those that are locked down in high tower blocks or whatever, you know, down Leith and Edinburgh, wherever, coming out for the day. I live in the snobbiest community, Gullen News Group. Everyone moaning, oh, look at all these people that have locals using their beaches. This is disgusting. I think, do you on the beach like? Can you imagine if these people in Edinburgh stopped us from going up to use our pubs and restaurants and nightclubs, you know? Really terrible attitude. But, in fact, what I'm going to say is the locals are probably the worst. <laughs> oh, on Facebook. You never realised what a lovely walk these golf courses are, you know? And there's somebody on um, North Berwick News Group, Facebook uh, group, yesterday saying, what a lovely walk through North Berwick West Links. Is there any chance he could open it up to the public to walk while golf is still being played? It's just so it's it's opening a can of worms. Now we we um, left all the bins, every tee box, every tee box is a bin for the golf for the members. And I said to the boys, throw them off the tees, just leave them in the rough at the side of the tees. How do you bring them all in? Because they're all brim full of dog shit bags. <laughs> brim full of dog shit bags. You know, if you've got a dog, the 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 crap is your problem, no mine. But it is, you got some good problem. fertilizer there now, though. No, <laughs> seriously. Oh Jesus, disgusting. Just mix that. I, I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind dog walkers walking if their dogs are on a lead, which they're meant to be. You know, but it's these dogs running loose, birds nesting. There's deer. It's just, it's just a free for all at the minute. And I think I don't want to be um, pessimistic here, but. The reality is, I think it's opened a huge can of worms, and I think it's a problem that's just not going to... When lockdown ends, I don't think that problem's going to stop overnight. I think it's here to stay for a while. So that's my biggest problem with it. Would you say that the pros and cons that that Davey just expressed um, and spoke about there is pretty much the same feeling of, of yourselves? Yeah say we're slightly different because we're on common land we're open to the public anyway even when golf's on we always get walkers and at the moment because we're basically a very small town the people who are walking on the course are all members so they do have respect for the place yeah but very rarely do we get somebody coming on in a bike or a you know we get the old push chair going along but it's all members just out for a walk they'll keep away from greens We've got their kids playing in the bunkers, but we're not really that bothered at the moment. You know, I'm kind of driving about with blinkers on, you know, because if I chased one, you'd chase them all. But it's all it's all members, and I, you know, they'll be golfing, not walking, in a week and a half's time. We hope. So, a lot of them might realise that, as Mark Twain said, it's a good walk ruined, and give up the golf. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know. Um, it's interesting the dynamics from the, again east to up to the kind of north of Scotland as well. But James and Scott in the west and in the central belt, some of the things that I've seen on social media, what you guys have had to put up with regarding dog walkers, regarding also getting challenged from general public saying, why why shouldn't I be here basically? and being disrespectful to your golf courses, how, I mean, that's something that's, that must have affected you. I mean, we've got a lot of people walking, they've never been on a set foot on a golf course before, you know, so they've no idea what a green is or a bunker is, you know, so it's educating them and you do, you try and speak to some of them and you can get told where to go, but we've also had a few that I can't believe how, how beautiful it is walking over the course and We've actually had a few inquiries for membership, so I think it's you know, there's been pros and cons, like you said. People were putting yeah. a few notices out just saying, Look, golf's coming back next week. We hope you've enjoyed walking to the course. Please go back to the pass. Membership's available if you're if you've really enjoyed it, you know. So, we're trying to make a positive out of it, but it'll be hard breaking those people's habits that have, like you say, started walking over fairways and, and yeah. down the holes and getting them to go back to the edges. So, we'll see. Yeah, just the same. It's uh, it's been. I mean, we've had so many positive feedback from the kind of general public, and I think it's also going to be good for us. Um, we obviously want to feel like kind of we're part of the community. So I think uh, having some some obviously kind of commu- obviously community out there that's just walking the course has been good. Uh, we've taken on quite a f- few new members already, which is a a kind of positive. Um, 
yeah, kind of same as we're, we've been lucky. We've not had massive amount of damage. We've maybe had some kind of uh, bikes across greens and again buggies. But it's a bit like try to put the blinkers on because if you challenge one, I think you'll be there all day uh, challenging everybody. But I mean. As a club, we've we've worked well. I've had the kind of managing secretary; he's been in helping me, and uh, even the pro, the professionals, been out kind of doing bits and bobs. And I think that's been been a major impact as well. They've kind of actually seen our side of things and how our job works, and maybe the small jobs that they think of maybe only takes half an hour, but uh, it really takes like two three hours. So I think we'll take that as a positive and uh, try and move forward. Um, a few kind of a negative things. I had a kind of uh, what had to go up on a Wednesday night, and I uh, had found somebody playing golf on the golf course, chipping off a green and onto a green, and I uh, yeah got kind of more or less verbally abused, and it, that was quite tough. I kind of held my, my tongue for so long, and then kind of more or less had to tell tell him him where to go. Uh, that's that's quite challenging in itself, you know. The, 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 you, Sorry, Alan, can I interject here? Yes. Can I name a name? Is that allowed? It's not, it's not, it's not related to the golf industry. Yes. It's quite funny because one of the greenkeepers said, there's a lad playing golf and we, we've got a wee five hole kiddies course. Yeah. yeah? Kiddie at Loch Ness is like getting over 40 year old, by the way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I went up to check out who the hell's playing golf and here's this young lad. So I says, uh, what are you doing, son? This is closed. You know, none of our members are allowed to play in there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. I mean, you go, what's your name, by the way? And uh, the lad's name was O'Connor. His old man used to play for Hibs. I was in Gullen. Daddy O'Connor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. so that was his kid yesterday. It's, right, no, no. These, these things, Simon, and you, you probably have the luxury of not having a lot of general public wander on the course. No, I have plenty, but there is a few locals that have probably never been up there and seen it. I've walked the dogs. My my thing's uh, creatures. I've got a hundred goats running about the place, shitting and pissing everywhere, which is killing the grass. And deer. Are the members? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do members. Uh, it's gone back to nature a wee bit here, to be honest. Um, because there's not as many people for three years, they had uh, Saw Golf doing all the building and all the Irish guys building the hotel and the house and all that. So there's a lot of people about the place. And then since we've started maintaining the golf course, but going back up there now, goats, there's fucking hundreds of goats everywhere. And then deer, red deer everywhere. Um, but nah, we don't. The goats like wild? What? How are the goats on the course? Are they wild or what? Ah, uh, the wild goats are on the Isle of Jura everywhere. And um, believe it or not, when I was a kid growing up in Isle, I used to catch them and sell them for a tenner. <laughs> Davey, honestly, I, I, I need to say this. You need to take a trip over. It's a once in a lifetime, you know, it's a beautiful place. It's a once in a lifetime because it's... you're like, I'm a tad and you're like, I'm not going back there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what is that? Is that where Dean Dean Muir is? Dean's at Macri across Macri, the road, aye. Which is another the road. place. That's where yeah. I was brought up. I lived on Island, played uh, golf as a kid at Macri. And funnily yeah. enough, Dean was in my class at college in 1992 at Oatridge. Yeah, yeah. So, aye. on on that note, and staying with that, James, I'll say to you, do you think lockdown has caused another up? Or is going to cause future concerns with regards to general public just thinking they can roam anywhere because we don't have trespassing laws nowadays. Whereas before you didn't have that because the golf was always getting played. How? Well, I think I mean just looking at Sterling. I mean, we've, like I say, we've always had walkers. We're right on the edge of town, so yeah. like every morning before golf, we would have had the usual dog walkers walking, and they were like you know, and some of them. Uh, stay off greens. That some of them will do it just on purpose because you're watching them. You know, it's it's always going to be like that. So I don't know. It'll be interesting once the golfers are out there. Yeah, I think a lot of them will go back to the past, but you'll get some of them who refuse to move. You know. Ian, Ian, what about yourself? 
Uh, I don't think it'll change much for us. You know, as I say, we're common, a uh, uh, com common land, so you know we've got plenty of pathways going round the course, and everyone that's up here, as I say, ninety percent of them are members. So we're not. I really can't see any problems when we go back to normal. You know, people are going to go back to walking on the beach, which is literally 10, 15 yards away from the course. So, yeah, I can't see any problems in that area for us. Scott and Davey, what about you? Yeah, just a bit, bit same as James. I kind of, we've had a lot of kind of general public kind of walking the course before. Um, obviously, it's kind of up, up the rate kind of during lockdown. We're going to have some uh, marshals out the first couple of weeks just to try and control it, just for a health and safety aspect. Um, but hopefully we'll kind of, hopefully I'll start taking note and just using the right away. way. Um, but we all know that the general public will just try and kind of go uh, wherever they want. But Which, that's exactly what you've just said there leads me on to, and I'll, I'll ask you this, Davey, as well, because I think you and I kind of discussed this as well um, prior to the, the, the Q&A. How do you think you guys are going to police the general public from continuing some of their daily activities on your course without causing any confrontation, conflict, you know, like Scott's experienced? How do you uh, think? I mean, it's going to be a big challenge. Yeah, it is. I mean, I speak to them politely and ask them if they can <laughs> please get their dog under control. Uh, feeling that, like... <laughs> Feeling that landmines, maybe I don't know. Do you know borrow one of Colin Colin's guns? No? I've got a couple of guns myself, by oh, the way. Yeah. Uh, no, um, yeah, no. I think um, I would like to think in the long term that the um, right to roam would be reviewed um, because it is just ridiculous. And I'm not being selfish. I know everyone should enjoy the outdoors, but I mean, you wonder where they used to walk before lockdown. You know, it's crazy. But like I say, that was a worrying post in the North Berwick news group and there's a lot of comments supporting it oh yes the link shouldn't just be for golf you know this is what they're saying so it really has opened a can of worms but no i do please it i speak to them politely but you know at the same time if they if they i've got two or three um repeat offenders so then you get a wee bit more firm with them but at the end of the day there's <laughs> nothing you can do and like, and like you said like james says some of them do it despite um but we've had no vandalism. We've had hoses in it. We had a load of galaxy, about 100 metres of galaxy hose in it. Um, apart from that, we've not had any real vandalism or what have you, but just try to keep people to adhere to some sort of decent moral sense, you know? Yeah, That's the problem. Because at the end of the day, it is our workplace. It's everything. We, hours and time we, we invest in, in the golf course. My um, second in command, he caught a family... Um, playing football on 18th Green last week. Now, that thing commands huge. He's like giant haystacks, seriously. And, then, and, and But Kev was very polite, and the, the guy said, oh, we're not doing any harm. And Kev said, you're playing on a product that's cost thousands and thousands of pounds to produce. And the hours it goes in, do you not realise that? Oh, really? Really? No idea. So again, I suppose it's about education as well, eh? That's and signage. Um, who was it, James? Was it you, or was it was it is it you, Scott, that said about the signs? Um, mm -hmm. You know, lockdown's come to an end. Please respect. Uh, start using the paths again. I quite like the, the wording of that, actually. I might look into that and put a couple out in the course. But in my opinion, when golf starts, I just hope it calms down a bit. And, um, you know, the sooner some of these I think you, are, you like to think that some of the members would also, once, once the, the golfers are out there playing golf and there's people walking, a lot of members are more than happy to tell people to oh, yeah. Yeah. kindly oh, yeah. move out of the way. Probably one in the back of the cranium. That seems <laughs> go, go for a Molotov. <laughs> a Molotov. Dunlop 65. <laughs> um, leading, leading into the, 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 the last two questions, guys, and Simon spoke about members there. Has your club helped you guys in trying to ease the membership expectations and what I mean by that is when the COVID kicked in and we had furlough in place and people were saying that you know we can't play golf there was a lot of membership uh, social media pages where members were coming on and saying oh this place will be like Augusta it'll be great it'll be this which puts a lot of added pressure on you 
because of their expectation levels. And I suppose this is one of the reasons why we're doing this 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 uh, Q and A session is to try and get over the measure, uh, the message that that you guys have been up against. So, what do you think, and who's going to use that expectation? Is there somebody for the the, the club going to do it? Do you think? Well, certainly for us, we send the members an email every uh, Friday. In fact, one's just pinged in just now. And it obviously mentions course condition and I give them a little report every Friday. You know, and we've just expanded on that. Basically saying to members that you know, even though definition is there, when they're, when they're out walking and the course may look lovely, you know, we don't have the, the, the surfaces yet because, because we've not had the staff or the time to do it. So, so they, they get informed every week. So fingers crossed when they do get back, as I say, we might have that week's grace before the the moans and groans come in. So, so we'll wait and see. Last one, because obviously I'm, I'm, I don't want to take up too much of your time as well, and I really appreciate you guys doing this. I, I personally think that golf clubs, golf courses, um, greenkeepers have been exceptional um, with... COVID-19 and the practices and policies that they have put in place immediately, even before we went into lockdown with, you know, the examples of touch points, pulling bunker rakes in, um, ball washers, bins, etc., cetera, um, pins, somebody looking at a digital, you know, pin hole sheet, stuff. You took every single measure possible before this happened, which is, I think, a great advert for, obviously, the greenkeeping and golf fraternity, if you like. But who's going to be responsible at the club for monitoring the golfer's behaviour and who's going to basically keep on top of the social distancing? Because really, guys, it's not only the general public, it's not only the membership we're looking at, but it's your staff and your welfare that we need to take into consideration with us as well. So who's going to be the one to, to monitor it and police that? Well, certainly for us, that uh, you'll be up to me to try and monitor the guys, which is quite going to be quite difficult when you've got 20 guys. You know, try to keep them all two metres apart. You know? So we've got a few kind of procedures that will be in place when they all come back. You know, split squads, things like that. Certainly on the golf course, we will have a starter on the first tee to make sure that nobody congregates there. And that there will be a course ranger as well, you know, making sure that, you know, basically guys are, are doing what they should do. Now, we've got to think that most, or 90% of the golfers are adults, so they should be able to do it themselves. Yeah. That's what you would hope. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anybody? <laughs> Slide you want to add to that? I mean, uh, we all know golfers, though. I mean, there's a lot of people that might be growing up, but they'll just want to carry on as normal. Um, I think it will be interesting times for. I think everyone, every every place is different. Uh, I seen a, I saw a good thing. My pals at uh, Castle Rock in Northern Ireland, and all the members have been out helping them getting the bunkers ready and stuff like that, which I thought was. Brilliant. Pretty touching, and then I saw they've got a great hand sanitizer before and after you come off the golf course. Where it's one where you you use your foot to tap it, and it squirts the sanitizer onto your hands. Uh, I'm not sure about the different gadgets they've got for uh, getting the ball out the hole. I've seen umpteen ones. I like the bit of PVC pipe just cut and stuck in the hole, cut that so the ball doesn't actually go into the hole. But I think I monitoring and try to manage people not touching the flag or keeping people two metres apart. Whether it's golf or whether it's daily life, you see it all the time where people aren't, I think, because it's been going on for so long now, maybe here where you're away from it, I think people are just getting more relaxed and more relaxed as it goes on anyway because yeah. it's been such a long time that they've had to live, live like this. I think as soon as they start easing lockdown, that's it burst pretty much. Yeah, I would agree. I think I, my brother-in-law's a greenkeeper down in uh, in Manchester, and uh, he says it's just like it was before now. Yeah, 
just purely because it, it eased and allowed golf back into um, England, you know, what, a week ago or whatever. And he says the place is absolutely rammed and it's just like it was before. Nobody's given a hoot, really. But I don't, it's hard for them to police it. You look at look at the roads and stuff down there, beaches and everything. Uh, Nobody, you go to other parts of Europe where you get fined or, you know, things are happening where here it just doesn't seem to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, games, you anything to add? I mean, it's been frustrating watching so many walkers walking over the course and like they're not from the same house you know rightly you know you've got groups of five six people yeah uh playing on the course you know and that your members walking over that can't play golf so it's been really frustrating for members you can sure so but yeah they'll, they'll we'll police it ourselves pro shop and, and marshals to start with uh we're not going to get involved if we see something we'll report it but uh we'll be busy enough we'll keep well away from them mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, no, we, just the whole club will take a take a role in uh, policing it. Obviously, the pr- professional, uh, the general manager, uh, myself, and uh, we'll have obviously marshals out helping us. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, obviously, members just speaking speaking to anybody that's kind of seen breaking the, the rules. But I mean, I think James t- touched on it. Just at the moment, you're kind of looking down a hole and you're seeing like kind of eight eight folk walking down one hole and. And you're thinking, how can we not have golf out there? Uh, that's been pretty tough. So, Well, guys, that last question there brought us to the end of the Q&A session, which I think has given, given us all some really good insight, given us all a variance of you know opinions, resources, whether it be staffing, whether it be machinery, or you know where, difference in weather, or where you are in the world, or the amount of mem- members you've got. I think what we've done here is hopefully going to give the message across to other greenkeepers that we're not alone, we're all in it together. And I think at the same time that membership and golfers hopefully will see this on social media and realise the struggles that you guys have got, not just during COVID, but everyday challenges. So thank you all very much for joining. And I hope that you all stay in contact and then maybe try and get a wee catch up sometime as well. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. Cheers. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, good meeting you all. <laughs>